in leading the desktop ecosystem. Thank you for attending the webinar today and I would like to welcome you all to the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to common problems faced by our customers today. To introduce myself, to introduce the presenters, we have David Funk, Director of Sales and Marketing, Uniprint, and John Ricuti, Pre-Sales Engineer from Uniprint. Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program that showcases and recommends third-party products, solutions, and services that demonstrate compatibility with Citrix products. Customers can quickly and easily find solutions recommended by Citrix in the Citrix Ready Exchange Marketplace by navigating to citrixready.com. For more information on the Citrix Ready program, you can navigate to citrix.com slash partner programs slash Citrix Ready. Today, we will learn how to secure mobile printing with Uniprint, listen to the presentation detailing the solution, and watch some amazing demos. A brief introduction about Uniprint. Uniprint was founded in the year 1999. Head office is located at Toronto, Canada. Uniprint has over 900 total employees and has been a Citrix partner since 2011. Uniprint is the first to patent a PDF-based Unicell printer driver. Uniprint created to solve server-based computing printer driver issues and today a lot more. Uniprint are the leaders in VDI, RDS, cloud printing solutions and are distributed worldwide over 70 countries and millions of users. Before we start the presentation, uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel on the right hand side and we'll take your questions in the question and answer session. Without any further delay, please welcome David Fang, Director of Sales and Marketing from Uniprint, to begin today's presentation. Hi, David. Hi. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, if there's uh, any issues in terms of uh, hearing, uh, please let me know. Um, without uh, further ado, I'm just going to hear the agenda. <laughs> so we want to talk about the secure mobile printing challenges what is our solution and what's its benefits and ROI, and then at the end we have a Q&A session. But please do send in the questions uh, uh, via the chat line because uh, John Rishuti, who's my pre-sale engineer, is also with me and he can handle uh, any uh, questions uh, at the, as well at the same time. So we can make it more interactive. Anyway, here's just a list of customers worldwide that uh, we have, some of the names that you know and are very familiar with, like the HSBC Bank. In Canada, of course, we have uh, a couple of uh, large companies like Transcontinental and uh, Deloitte and so on and so forth. So the company, as uh, Manju mentioned earlier in the slide, we've been uh, in the marketplace for more than uh, a decade, since 1999. Uh, Uniprint is a, very, is a division of a very large company called Axio Solutions based out of Montreal, and together we have uh, more than 900 employees. So here's a very interesting stat, right? Uh, we all heard about the cyber securities and there are quite a few well-known names that have issues and I'm not going to mention their name, but just read this. 70% of organizations have experienced one or more accidental data breach through printing. This is not what Unifin said. It's Coserca Research did, a, did it in uh, 2012. Uh, it is two years old, but as we all know, you know, two years is a long time internet. So that data may be even more. But the point I'm trying to get at is that when you look at end-to-end -end security, a lot of people ignore the printing side. And this is where we should take a look at that, right? Because when you look at security challenges in print, we all know about that. You know, the, the somebody uh, print a document to a printer, when they get to the printer, the document is gone, picked up by somebody, or in a large organization, when you say file and print, and then you select printers, because of the encrypted name sometimes, you print to a different printer, uh, you know, like, or, you know, like sometimes the printer you send to is offline. Now, then the last one is, who's monitoring all that, right? And, and, and we know a lot of organizations actually solve this problem by giving people who really uh, are concerned about confidentiality or security and give them their own individual printers. And this is a story that I always, like I was in a trade show and I talked to a user 
who have 800 users, uh, and they have 900 printers, all more, more than one to one. I mean, and we all know how expensive it is to solve to, to support printers. That's not the solution. So before I go into that, let me just talk a little bit about Uniprint. Some of you may have heard about us, but essentially what is Uniprint? Uniprint really the core technology is our patented uh, PDF-based uh, universal printer driver. The first thing that we do is we compress and encrypt the print job, make it smaller, make it more secure, and then we apply this, and, and this solution can be installed in uh, Microsoft LDS environment or Citrix, of course, Citrix set apps, Citrix desktops, and other environments. If you have uh, any questions so far, if not, I'll just go, go over that. So here's a typical Uniprint environment. Essentially, we have three components. In a data center on the left hand side, you have a Citrix uh, server farm. You install the, uh, our component called application server or VDI, you insert, install the application server on top of that. And the first thing that uh, when the user do a foreign print, the uh, Uniprint application server basically convert the print job into PDF. And then it's compressed and it's encrypted and then it goes through the network onto the right hand side and which are like home users maybe uh, or network printers or uh, but here's the, the other component the second component what we call the Uniprint bridge server this is our licensing server as our man management server basically it, you know take a look at the print job and said okay you go here you go there or you go here but that's really what it does and then the third component is a print server the print server is primarily used when you have an environment that you said, hey, I have thin clients, or I want to simplify my management, I don't want to install any uh, client on my machine, that's where you will install the Uniprint print server. Let me just go into that a little bit. So this is what we call about network printing, right? As I mentioned earlier, in the data center, you got the application server on the Citrix server farm, you have the bridge server in the data center, or you can have the print server in at the data center as, as well. Or a lot of people, they have remote branches, they have the print server, Windows-based print server. Oh, by the way, the Uniprint print server is installed on top of the regular Windows server. So you don't need a dedicated print server to do this job. Essentially, this setup is ideal for thin clients, which is what most people are doing now in terms of consolidating, uh, in terms of, uh, we, we hear a lot of people uh, using, well, there's still people, believe it or not, uh, upgrading from Windows XP to, to, to Windows 7 and using Citrix as the primary uh, the tool to move them into Windows 7. And, and this is where we, 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 we can help in terms of value add. The draw of our software is really our printout. It's a GUI-based print management tool. It basically allows the system administrator using the drag and drop and, and, and assign printers based on Microsoft Active User ID, uh, user groups, OUs, or device name, IP address, or host name. Uh, it essentially, is our, our tool for uh, printer mapping. I mean, uh, I, I would encourage uh, you people out there who, uh, who are looking at uh, print management, printer mapping, try our tool because, you know, time and time again, uh, we, we, uh, we show that uh, in terms of, you know, like imagine your users moving from one floor to another floor in a Citrix environment, how quickly that the system will recognize, oh, David Fung is now on floor one instead of floor two and how quickly our system will assign the printers uh, automatically so that David Fung can print the right printer. This is a power, power, powerful, powerful tool. Now, everybody knows us, or people who are on the, uh, uh, attending today knows us as a universal printer driver. I want to talk about beyond universal printer driver. In the last three years, I feel like I'm working for a startup. There's so many things that we have done in the last three years. And the first thing I want to talk about, which is the theme of, theme of today's webinar, is what we call secure pull printing. It, just imagine, 
everybody in your organization print one print queue. We call it virtual print queue. So all your printer mapping issues, they, they are gone away. So it's very simple. In the data center, we have a bridge server. So when everybody say file print, it prints to a VPQ. The job is now held by the bridge server. And as soon as you walk over to a device called a VPAD or any print release mechanism, now the job is now printed. And you can direct the print job to the specific printer right next to the VPAD or the printer that you want. Let me just talk a little bit about the VPAD. This is a really uh, ingenious in my way, uh, in my thinking, that uh, obviously I'm biased. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, doing uh, print release. The device is a network appliance. It really is a small touch screen, seven inch, that uh, you can enter your AD user ID, and if you want, you can put in a PIN code, or if you really want, you could even use a smart card, RFID or HID. Now you basically have something that you own, something that you know, a two-factor authentication. So when you release a print job, it's only your print job. How more secure is that, right? And then you walk over there to the printer that you want and then pick up your printer. The other, really the other uh, uh, key feature is that our VPAD is vendor printer independent. So we really, and, and during the demo, we'll show you a little bit of that uh, giving time, is that we really don't care what printers, what brand of printers you have. We can basically uh, uh, send the print job to. And obviously, well, the, besides security, the side benefit of all this is, you know, we, you can save a lot of uh, waste, wastage. Because how many times you print something and say, oh, damn, I don't really want that. So you take, pick up the report, and then you chuck it into a recycle uh, uh, bin or, you know. So now, those, those wastage are gone. And, and the other features, you, you can take a look. But in addition to that, the VPAD is really a multi-purpose print and appliance. As I mentioned earlier, it's a small device. It's a network device. It has an on and off uh, uh, button. But a lot of times now, people are talking about bringing the print servers back to the data center. And, and if you do that, you know, like you, you, you want compression. Uh, or you, uh, you said, you know what, I, I only have a small branch, or maybe uh, my branch connect uh, through internet, uh, there's firewall issue. The VPAD can solve all of that. Because number one, it can compress the print job, the native print job by up to 95%, depending on, on the, uh, uh, the nature of the file. And the other one is that the VPAD is more than just one-to-one. -one. You don't need to install one VPAD in front of a printer. It could be one-to-many, right? And so you can be your print server, basically. And and essentially, and you can remotely manage it. it like I said, it's on and off. It's a Linux base. Obviously, there's no more like Windows-based print server that you got to keep updating. And so all those headaches are gone. So it's a really, uh, a very uh, powerful print and pride. Let me talk a little bit about the, the other key feature that we uh, introduced or is still currently under beta. The reason is that we're trying to get it certified by Apple. And for those of you who, who know Apple, it takes a little bit longer time in terms of getting your software certified. And we're going through that process. What the AirPrint module do, it really is a very simple single click enable disable feature to make your printer, all your corporate printers on your network, AirPrint compatible. Just imagine, you know, like every one of your printer or whichever one you want, you want to enable it AirPrint comp uh, compatible, then any iOS device can print to. So the beauty of all this is zero configuration on your iOS device, zero configuration on the print server. All, all you need to do is, as a system administrator, is to enable, hey, this uh, uh, Xerox Phaser printer as AirPrint compatible. And bingo, it is now available to the, all your iOS users in your network. The other one new feature is also in beta right now. It's already working. We are, we are, we have uh, customers testing it. 
is what we call the email to print feature. This is a really interesting feature, and and uh, again, it it, uh, it comes is feedback from our customer who said, hey, you know what? We have a use case like this. Just imagine this. You know, a lot of financial organizations or government and, or even corporations, you have visitors coming to or retail. I like was just talking to a retail chain, and this is what they are asking. You know, like they have buyers and they have uh, uh, vendors come into the reception area and they want to print uh, a report or some kind of research. How do you allow them to print to your uh, network printers when, it, when they are in your receptionist area? Okay, here's the solution. You give them a customized e email address. You ask them to just say, hey, send your print job to this email address and the printer is right there outside the meeting room or right in, in, in the meeting room, right? And the other thing is, if you use our secure pool printing feature, with a VPAT, you actually can send the, the, the user can send a uh, 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 print job to the VPQ, and then you get a pin back and say, okay, take that pin and go to any VPAT and then release that job, even to your guests. How more secure is that, right? And, uh, and, and you know, the other uh, beauty about this uh, feature is that, again, Zero configuration to for your guests. All they need to do is just email to print. Email to print to a VPQ, email to print to a specific printer. And it, it works with any mobile device, whether it's Android, Blackberry, you know, of course Windows and Apple. So we're talking about beyond universal printer driver. And, and we are now, you know, into uh, a lot of times people talk about enterprise print management. And when you talk about enterprise, what's one of the key uh, requests that people talk about? High availability, 7 by 24, even for printing. Well, okay. Here's, here's a, a, a module that we've been installing and, and, and is fantastic because if you don't want to use any clustering technology like Microsoft, you can just use our high availability module. Essentially, it makes, you know, uh, we duplicate the print server, we duplicate your print server, so if any one of these devices go down, it automatically goes to the other, and it prints to the printer, so no more downtime, and it could even low balance your printing volume if you have large organizations. So really is a very, very uh, powerful tool for enterprise who really uh, require a 7x24 printing environment. Or even if you don't require 7x24 and you want to just sleep easy at night, no more phone calls, it, it, it's a very small investment in terms of uh, making your printing infrastructure uh, reliable and redundant. Oh, one more thing. I want to talk about statistics module. Because we talked about earlier, right? Who's monitoring all these people printing? Unless you have some kind of uh, uh, software to track everybody who prints, and then you can scan it, you can look at it, you can, so that if somebody said, oh, gee, who prints a report? Oh, I don't know. But if you have our statistics module, you know. Because you, you basically, you know, anybody who prints to Uniprint driver, we collect all their user ID, we look at their application, we even how many pages, the date, the time, oh, are they using black and white or color? Uh, like all this information are there. And obviously you can uh, uh, collect all this information and we have a reporting module that you can uh, write, send reports and, and so on and so forth. So it's another really uh, uh, another uh, powerful module for our Uniprint um, uh, Infinity. Anyway, so this is my cue to uh, turn it over to uh, John Rishuti so that he can show you some of the uh, features that I talk about. John, you are now the presenter. Great, thank you, David. Just give my screen a section, second to come up. Here we go. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so um, I'm going to segue from uh, what David was talking about uh, to the uh, secure printing. Okay, so here we have um, people coming into companies with uh, tablets, um, laptops. Uh, let's say people who are using, uh, in this case, we're going to talk about people who are using a receiver on a laptop. Okay, so they're, they're coming into a company, maybe they're commuting in the morning and they're checking their email. Let's uh, use the example of a lawyer. He's uh, in the Citrix session and uh, he wants a document printed. Um, so he's in the session and he wants to print the document, but he doesn't want it just sitting there on the, on the printer for anybody to see. So what we have for that type, type of scenario is the following. Okay, so I'm in my Citrix receiver session. Okay, I pushed uh, the Uniprint virtual print queue uh, printer that David was talking about early, earlier to his session. Okay, so I have a list of four printers, but I, I have this virtual print queue sitting there. So um, in this case, the document I'm going to print is a PowerPoint. Okay, I hit File Print, select my virtual print queue, right, and send a job as a normal print job. Okay, document gets spooled. Um, however, the document is now sitting in a repository on a server called a bridge server. So uh, this lawyer walks into his office and he's ready to release this document. Okay, I have an emulator that's running right now. Okay, and this kind of simulates our software that can run either on the printer or um, on a on that VPAD device that David was talking about. So uh, in this case, the lawyer has a an access card. He would tap his badge, and it would take him right into his queue. Okay. Now, for purposes of this demo, I don't have a actual card, um, but I will type in my Active Directory credentials, click OK, and here are my print jobs. So uh, pretty neat because I can take this job and uh, I could print it anywhere where I have one of these devices. It was not released um, until I walk up to the mod, until I walk up to the device and release the job. I can even implement um, a password requirement. So I have my badge. Um, I can see my print jobs, but if I'm keen on security, I can take the job and add a password to it before they release the job. Okay. Now the big key, the key behind our device is, is vendor agnostic, so I can assign multiple printers um, for output. So in this case, I have a list of three printers. Okay. These are printers that are typically nearby um, a VPAD. Okay. I manage this device. Um, from our software called the Bridge Server. Okay, there's a, a module on there that lets us configure advanced settings such as timeouts for print jobs, you know, cache jobs, etc. I can also um, manage those physical VPADs with the software that's running from this software. It's it's very um, it's very easy to manage the individual devices. Simple as right clicking. Um, adding printers to certain devices is point and click. And like David said in the uh, demo, it was these are Linux devices. They're hardened, so there's zero configuration. Literally on on them, all you need is an IP address and the IP address of our bridge server. Okay. So so that's the VPAD. Uh, that's a situation where you have um, doctors, lawyers, roaming around uh, a facility. And they want to send a print job, but you don't know. Um, you know, they could be mobile around the hospital, and they could be in any floor at any time. So it's difficult to push individual printers to those doctors. Okay, so that's the first scenario. The next scenario I'm going to talk about is uh, air print. Okay, I'm going to switch over here to a different virtual machine. Okay, and on this virtual machine, I have um, a couple of printers. Okay. Just make sure I updates. So I have a couple of printers on this on our print server, and I want to enable these printers for my users. Okay. So uh, once you have our software and AirPrints installed, it's as simple as right click um, and in AirPrint enabling a printer. So any model, any manufacturer, whether it supports AirPrint or not, once we have our software installed, it will make that printer AirPrint compatible. So what does that mean? Um, it means no apps on your Apple device. So 
we're using, now I'm just bringing up um, an emulator here. So we're using the native AirPrint features uh, from Apple. Okay, so um, in other words, I have this uh, web page I want to print. Okay, I don't have to install any apps on this device. Okay, I simply use the Apple features. I go in there, I hit print, and the native iOS printing appears. Okay, uh, in this case, I have that HP 4250 printer. Okay, I have one printer published. So this could be used internally, externally, depending on the needs of your company. Okay, uh, let's go back to my server here. I enabled this printer. So let's just say I want to enable the brother printer. It's a simple right click, air print enable. Okay, I'll go back to my device, select print, and select the printer and then the other device will appear in the list. Okay? So it's that simple. Um, but that's specific to Apple and Apple's iOS uh, AirPrint devices. Um, now let's talk about um, email to print. So I have a guest who's walking into the company and wants to send a print job to a printer. Okay? Uh, let's bring up that module for you. So you can see what that looks like. Okay, so the first, I'll start with um, the VPQ, and that's kind of um, a neat feature that we have for email to print. So I can print to a virtual print queue as well, like I showed you in the first part of the demo. So I could send a job to a virtual print queue, or if I want, I could send it directly to a printer. Okay, I can email enable a particular printer. What the big difference here is a job would go directly to the printer and spool all the pages. Okay, so once that email is sent, the job immediately would be sent to that printer. Okay, we would turn on email to print, give the give the printer an email address. Okay, so uh, there I did see a question about how we do this, and essentially we do enable an email address per printer. So each printer has a unique email address. Okay? The question was, uh, would each user have a unique address. Right, I saw that. And the answer is no, the printer has a unique address. Yeah. Okay. Now, if that's difficult to manage, that's where this uh, printer, uh, virtual print queue comes into play. I send an email to the virtual print queue, and then I walk up to our device and see the job, and then from there I can uh, determine if I want to print all the pages, some of the pages, how I want it, do I want it duplex, etc. I have some more uh, finishing options. So, I'll bring up a corporate email client here, and I'll send a job to that printer, okay? I want to print just the attachments, the body gets discarded, okay? So what happens after I send that job? Um, our software is going to go in that queue, check, pull the attachment out, and then it's going to send me back an email, giving me a pin for that actual job that I sent, okay? So th this is what the email would look like. There's the job. Just move that over. So the, here's my PIN number. I've submitted this document, and now I can release the document. So I have that PIN in my email address, 5539. I walk up to that device, and it's going to see that my email address, because that's the from address from that email. Okay. So there's a couple of jobs in there. Mm -hmm. Of course, I probably forgot that, 5539. <laughs> There's the job, and I can send it to the printer nearby. Okay, um, But again, I, I have some finishing features. I can go in there, and I can select all pages. I can select the range, number of copies, and some collating, and trace, etc. So I have that flexibility of uh, manipulating the job rather than just pulling it. So that's uh, email to print. So uh, two ways to send it to printers. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you, uh, David did talk about statistics. Um, so our software does allow for that. You know, if you enable this feature, we can anything that's sent through the subsystem, we can grab statistics on. Okay. So uh, here's an example. We have um, a downloadable 
component that's, uh, that, that's no cost that has some hand reports. Um, we can pull up one of these reports or we can customize them. They're based on crystal reports. We're just grabbing the data that went through the system through a SQL database. Okay. So I have all, you know, all the information I need. Um, you go back, uh, reports, I have the number of pages, copies, uh, whether I chose to send a job in color and duplex the job. Um, I also know which applications I'm printing from. Okay. So I have all these details. And so this is a sample report, uh, just a print activity report. Okay. Again, these can be customized. Um, there's, uh, with this tool, it allows you to select, easily select ranges, etc. So the key here is all the information there is in the database. We collect it all, and you can build basically custom reports based on that data. Um, in addition to the reporting, we can also archive. Every print job sent through the system can be archived. So that means um, we can get a, an actual PDF image of every print job ever sent if you enable that feature. Okay, so those are two key features. Now I will hand it back to David. And John, uh, there's a question here that maybe we could just quickly show, and I think uh, we need to demo that, is how does it work in terms of uh, feature accession? How does the printer mapping work You know, when you lock on and lock off from a feature accession? Uh, do you think you can do that? Or sure. You know, okay. Because looking at the time, uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. Okay. So I have a Citrix session running right now. Okay. Now, uh, David earlier mentioned a tool that we call PrintPal. PrintPal is our, our printer management tool. So I have a session running, okay, and I've used our tool PrintPal to assign printers to my desktop. So this particular user has a number of printers based on um, rules that we've written. Okay, so let's take a look at a PrintPal map. Okay, a PrintPal map is essentially a database of printers. Okay. Um, and user and attributes that we assign in here. Um, so I commonly use the example of a hospital, okay, where we have, um, you know, staff that are moving around different sections of the floor, okay. So they move from the central, east, and uh, west wing, okay. And we map printers. Uh, we can take away group policies, scripting. Um, we can take that all away and use our tool to push these printers to users so that they map quickly and the printers will follow them. Okay, So uh, I log into a Citrix session. I'm on the central wing. I can map that printer based on this IP range. Okay, I can map it based on the actual host name. So what's the endpoint name? Not the actual uh, VDI machine or Citrix server. Where am I connecting from? So that thin client that's sitting in, in the uh, east wing on the eighth floor here. Okay, I can also go into Active Directory and I can uh, choose you know, traditional users and groups, uh, you know, um, OUs, um, and so I have that flexibility. So I have Active Directory, I have IP addresses, I have host names, um, so I could essentially map printers based on all those attributes. Okay, uh, that session that I was running earlier. Okay. I was connecting from the central wing and from this IP address, and I was able to set this as a default for my users, okay, and map these additional printers, including the virtual print queue. So that's the tool I use to um, map uh, printers to user sessions that will follow them, where, you know, around the company based on location. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll switch it back to you, and then right. I'm sure we'll address additional questions. Yes, um, we have a lot of questions, and uh, because I, I promise you, I'll quickly uh, run through. There's uh, only a few more slides, and then we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. One of the uh, um, this uh, session is all recorded, uh, so you can view it later on, and uh, we could also address the questions. Uh, and so on, and uh, doing the Q questions and uh, Q&A session. OK, let's talk a little bit about benefits of using Uniprint. Obviously, you know, uh, we all know about the benefit of universal printer driver. 
it basically creates uh, system uh, stability. The other one in our case is really file compression. And I just want to give you a story here because uh, one of our uh, biggest customers in the U.S. is a financial organization who, who did a benchmark and they have back office operation in India and, and uh, Philippines. And, uh, and, you know, a 100 word, 100 page word document without Uniprint printing from India in a Citrix environment uh, would take four minutes and 23 seconds. I mean, imagine yourself on the other end printing a 100-page document and wait for four minutes. Now, with Uniprint, the time to wait was only 20 seconds. So you can see the compression. Obviously, the compression de uh, ratio depends on the nature of the file and so on, but just give you a taste of the speed. Uh, simplified print management, as you saw uh, from uh, John's demo about the uh, print pal, and if you use VPQ or our secure pool printing feature, really all the print management is about assigning uh, printers to the VPAP, you know, which is very, very simple. And, and obviously in terms of uh, security and audit trail, they're all there. I just want to show you a couple of use cases because, you know, nowadays everybody invests in technology, your CFO is going to say, well, you know, uh, why do we need to invest on additional software like a Uniprint Universal Printer Driver? Like, what's the payback? What's the ROI? Well, here's, a, here's one use case. You know, we did this uh, uh, with a U.S. hospital again. Uh, the number of uh, printer-related tickets Prior to uh, Uniprint, this is a stat that they gave us, 14,000, and about 50% uh, uh, is uh, printer related. And then after the Uniprint pilot, uh, you know, in terms of uh, going through, that they, they experienced a 30% reduction. So if you do the math in terms of average labor costs and you in terms of reduction of uh, uh, labor involved to, to resolve printer related uh, help desk tickets, here's the saving that you're looking at. Obviously, that number does not apply to every organization. Everybody is different. So I encourage you to take a look of yours, and, and when you do a pilot, you know, and, and POC, we should take a look at that. Let me show you another interesting stat, and, and this is from Gartner, and is not, you know, us uh, creating it. This is, you know, they, they did a research, and, and Secure pool printing can help reduce page volumes by 20 to 40 percent. Well, you can do the math, right? Because you really don't have any wastage because now people don't leave printers, uh, print out out there and unattended or misplaced or go into garbage. And the other one is setting duplex printing and monochrome as default. And, and with print power, you can globally set that, right? And that you can save 30 percent. Just taking a look at these two interesting stats from Gartner. And then when you look at uh, uh, what, what's, uh, what are the cost components of uh, print, you know, that's a hard cost, we, we all know that. Energy, technical cost, and let's not forget about that, technical support. Uh, and, and this is uh, our e EMEA team did a research and they come up with from various vendors, this is the stats. Uh, again, I want to emphasize that the deck will be available for download after the, uh, so you can take a look at that. And this is the average in terms of U.S. dollars. We are not talking about well, pounds, but $800 per year per employee. All right, it may be high, right? But even if it's 50 percent, you're looking at $400. Even if it's 30 percent, it's 240 bucks, right? So it's a big number. And if you use secure pool printing, you use our print profile, you use our uh, 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 statistics, you can track it. You know, if you can save 35% of that, that's $280. Even if it's half, it's 140 bucks. Even if it's not half, it's 70 bucks. So you can see the saving is very substantial. Anyway, so uh, we're at 11.42. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Manju and uh, have questions. We have a ton of questions. And uh, Manju, 
Hey David, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you both. Uh, let's now move to a question and answer session. The first question is, with the universal printer driver, how does Uniprint handle specific printer properties like hole punch or stapling of an MFB? So, John, you want to handle that? Sure. Uh, so what we have is a feature called printer profiles. Okay. Uh, this feature allows you to map those advanced features to a profile in the printer. Okay. So when a user hits file print, rather than the user going into the native driver and selecting those advanced features, he would go into something that's called the profile and simply select uh, a predetermined profile. Um, let's call it stapling as an example. We, the user would highlight stapling and then submit a job. So the job would be able to go through uh, stapled without the user going into the advanced driver and selecting those features. So we call that a profile. And that's managed um, on the print server. Okay. Next question, Manju. Perfect. So the next question is, uh, do I need to install a Uniprint client software on my Mac or PC? Okay. So uh, when we have users who are using Citrix for printing at home or they have locally connected printers, um, they will require a, a client. Okay. Um, and right now it's available for Mac and PC. Uh, that's the only scenario where they require a client. If you use our print server on the back end in a corporate environment, um, we can install our software driverless on, on their PC or softwareless, clientless we call it. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, moving to the third question. Uh, I, I believe this is a simple one. How many printers can your print server handle? Okay. Now that number can vary greatly depending on the environment. We've had uh, Customers have up to a thousand print queues on a print server, um, and really, this is, um, I guess, when you look at capacity, it's all driven by um, what the load is, uh, and it really varies environment to environment. Okay, so a heavily uh, used print server. This is a Microsoft print server. Our software just sits on top of it. So, whatever a Microsoft print server can handle, um, we're going to be able to handle as well, because ours. Our software will just take the PDF and render it using the native driver. So that number can vary, but we've seen up to a thousand. But uh, we've seen customers break them down in probably about half that on average. Great. So the next question is: Can we assign printers directly to the users remotely? What was the question? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, sure. Can I assign printers to users remotely? Oh, yeah. Okay. So if a user is printing remotely or they're in a corporate environment and you want to assign printers for them on the fly, you can use our Print Pal tool to push printers to users. If they're in a Citrix session, they can just right click on our software that runs uh, when they log in um, and refresh the printer. So um, they'll instantly have the printer added in their profile. So they can. Uh, there's, there's two ways to do it. It's self-service or you can push the printers to users. If they're at home, again, we have a different deployment scenario that requires a client and they can print to our Uniprint universal driver and have that job sent over a virtual channel to their home PC. So there's a number of ways to do that. Great. So moving to the next question. The question is, how is the software licensed? Well, the software is licensed by Citrix. Uh, uh, Synapse uh, is based on concurrent uh, user license. So uh, if you have so many concurrent users from Citrix, uh, then you should just match the uh, number with the Uniprint. It, uh, it really starts from 10 user pack to thousands. OK? Great. So the next question is, when will be the software in the website? OK. The software is available right now for download. Um, you know, print infinity. Uh, so they can go to the website right now, and um, there's a couple right here. Yep, you know, print.net, and they can download the current version of 815. Yeah. Yep. Great. So uh, next question is: Does this support multi-day printing in Citrix or remote desktop services? The question uh, was whether it supports RDS and 
The question is, does this uniprint solution support printing in multi-tray? In oh, multi-tray. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, it does support multi-tray. So the driver itself does allow you to select trays. Okay. So you can select the the tray, or you can have um, you can set up profiles that allow you to override that if you have if you want. So yes, it does support multi-tray. And it, like I said earlier, it does support advanced features, printing features. Yeah. Great. Next question is, how does this work with Citrix? Session printers and session printer driver mapping. In the world of Citrix, when you have uh, Citrix session printers, the idea here is if you're using our software, you no longer need Citrix session printers. You can use our driver instead to replace it. Okay. Next question is: Does this support for RFID cards built into VPAT? or an external connection of a card reader? Yeah, I can answer that one. Uh, the VPAT comes to, uh, with uh, three different models. One is uh, just touch screen only. The other one will support RFID cards only built in. So you don't have an external card reader dangling around or an HID card built in as well. OK? OK, great. So next question is, does this software support printers which are incompatible with Citrix? Uh, absolutely. Um, that's one of the common reasons they're using our software. Um, so uh, once you install our, as long as there's a native driver on a print server and the printer can, the, the, the document you're printing from uh, can print to a PDF, you can use our software, our driver. I would encourage uh, people who are out there who are interested, download our software. Uh, our technical support team will help them set it up. Uh, the software comes with a main guy. It's very, very simple um, to install and try it out. All right? Great. So we have a couple of more questions left. Uh, the next question is, uh, what if, if you want to restrict permissions to an user after they use this feature? Which feature are we referring to? What question was that? Uh, question is, uh, if a user uses the unit print printing solution, c can we restrict them in future? Oh, I think it's an email to print. Oh, email to print? Uh, with respect to email to print, so once uh, a printer is email enabled, um, if you turn it off, it will stop pulling that mailbox. Um, all the other management for any anything to do with email will have to rely on, let's say, Exchange. So you would have to have a, an Exchange administrator uh, manage that portion. So it's just a regular email address. Um, so you, you, all of you know with Exchange, you can restrict uh, who can send to that mailbox, etc. You would have to use that intelligence on the back end. Great. So I, I believe that answers your next question. The next question was related to Exchange. So the question was, does email to print require a mailbox on Exchange? Yes, it does. So um, it will use a, if you're using a Exchange, you can, uh, we can pull an IMAP or POP database. Um, so any, any solution, Exchange, um, um, uh, for the demo I use a Gmail account actually. So anything that's IMAP or POP compatible. We are. We have second last question. The second last question is: Is there a possibility to clean print jobs, which were not picked up automatically? Example, last mile. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, on our virtual print queue, um, on that uh, there's a configuration that allows you to trim uh, jobs based on time. So you can set um, all the jobs that weren't picked up to delete every hour, 24 hours, whatever you want. So that, that's configurable. Uh, there's also uh, a caching feature that we have in there. So once a user prints something, they can reprint it later. That's also managed uh, through time as well. You can set that to expire. So that's all, that's all configurable. Any other questions? Perfect. I have only one last question as of now. The last question is, is this Uniprint compatible with plotters? 
solvers? Yeah, I mean, it varies on models, models, but we have had a lot of success with a lot of plotters. Uh, I have, haven't seen anything, uh, any issues with them. And like uh, David said, uh, you, we would encourage people to, to test our software and oh, to make sure it works. Yeah, in yeah. fact, a couple of uh, very large on my slide, I, I pointed out like uh, lands department of uh, New Zealand and even lands department of Hong Kong, we use large models mm -hmm. to print, uh, 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 you know, maps, I mean, using New Zealand. So, all right. Perfect. Uh, Thank you, David and uh, John. Uh, with that said, we do not have any more questions, and we are about to end the webinar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all you. for attending today's webinar in Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. This concludes our broadcast. Thank you.